Hello and welcome back, and we will now begin the animation process, but before we do that, I'm going to take some of the tape here that we were talking about earlier and just kind of mark down where we're going to have the camera moving, just to follow it along that track, so that way when you zoom in with the camera itself, you'll be going in a straight line rather than having it wobble back and forth. Yeah, and uh, as you can see here, this little tape piece is right against our little tripod, which is what our camera is mounted on, right up here on. And basically what this is, is something you can find in a lot of different stores, but it's an easy way to secure our camera right on top here, so that way it doesn't get all, you know, movie. Because if you just put on a little box, there's a tendency that it could wiggle around a bit, maybe get off camera, or maybe get off frame here, and then everything will look a little bit too shaky. So this is a good way to steady it with these three little legs down here. And it also enables you to make a lot of different cool movements, or a lot of cool angles. Because I kind of like the lesson we said before, you kind of treat it like an actual character. And uh, if you just have the perfect balance down here, you can create a lot of really cool angles. Right, and the advantage of a tripod like this, I'm just going to go ahead and move it right away since we haven't started animating. But in, compared to a normal tripod where the legs are perfectly straight and you can't bend them at all, these ones you can bend like so. Exactly, and you can even bend these so much where you can have it wrap around something around like a little pole or something of that sort right. to really get high up angles. Or even like Tommy right down like right so. here. Whoa! Looks like it's Just like that. Exactly. Kind of think of this as a spider and whatnot. Yeah, there's just so many goofy things that you can do with that. But for now, we're going to keep it back to the spot that we had it. So that way we know, and see, it's a good thing we did put this tape down because now we know exactly where to put this tripod. Yep. Just another one of these prep work things that we were saying before. That's why it just makes everything go a lot easier and smoother when you have all these little markers down and you know exactly where to go because everything will be a lot easier for you. Okay, I'm just double checking to see if that's how far we want the camera to go and that looks just about right. So when animating we're just going to move the camera ever so slightly. Um, so to make it more fluid, if you wanted to, you could even take a ruler and mark down how far you want each movement to be. Uh, but we're not going to do that for this one. Exactly. You definitely get four gold stars for that one. So with what we did with the tape here, we can do that with Seymour as well and kind of mark down where we, where we want him to stop. And you can kind of see here in the camera itself that we don't see the floor at all. Now, I'm, what I can do now, let me set this down here, is I can put a little piece of tape where I want him to kind of stop. But as I said earlier, you just have to be careful that, to make sure whether or not the floor is in the shot, because we don't want to see the tape in your animation. Yep, and uh, if we're looking through this frame right here, we can see that that tape is not in frame, so it'll be perfectly fine just where it is. I'm going to actually adjust the camera just a little bit so we see a little bit more of Seymour. Make him more center in the frame. Like so. Ah, uh, yes. So Seymour's going to be walking in a straight line too, but I'm not going to tape down a straight line just yet like I did with the camera. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to take a piece of tape like so. And I'm going to use this to help me animate. So what we're going to be doing is making him walk just like this. But what I'm going to do, so I don't lose track of which foot I'm moving, because what we're going to do is move him a little bit, take a picture, move him a little bit, take a picture, move him a little bit, take a picture. Each step could be ranging from, say, three to five different pictures. So it'll be like three, 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 three. But... When animating, you might lose track of which foot you're animating if you get distracted somehow with something else and come back to it. You could be like, oh shoot, I don't remember which, which foot I was moving. But what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take the piece of tape and say we'll move his right foot first. I'm going to put this down kind of at the angle I want him to walk. Move, take a picture, move, take a picture. And then when we're done with that, I'm going to lift up the piece of tape, move it to his other foot, and then do the same thing and then we'll just keep rotating it back and forth for that while animating. Exactly. And all these little tips that we're telling you guys here, this isn't exactly essential because I know that this is an awful lot of work. It's just on your end, it'll make it, things a lot smoother and easier for you guys. Right. All these, these, this, this tape thing is completely optional, but it does really help out a lot. 
So the next step is to actually set up the shot. The, we have the camera where we want it. We have all the props set up where we want it. We have to put Seymour in his place. So, as you can see, this is where he's going to end up. If I have him this far back, you can still see him on the set, but right now you don't see him in the frame of the camera itself. So what we're going to have to do is walk him into the frame. But as you can see here, I'm walking him, and he's still not appearing in the frame. So what we're going to do is move him in where you can see him just barely in the frame here. And that's where we're going to have him come in from. But we don't want him in the shot right away, so I'm going to move him back a little bit. So he's out of the frame itself. And as you can see, he's a lot closer to his final destination than where I had him. And this will save us a lot of time because we don't want to animate him walking out here and he's not even in the shot yet. So this will make the animation process a lot faster to get him into frame than where he was before. Right, and that's exactly why we don't animate this little shopkeep back here because he's not going to be in frame. So we could be making all these cool little movements that will you know, get him the Oscar, but no one will be able to see it. So we might as well just focus on what this camera can actually see. Yep. So another trick before we begin animating... Um, when we're moving Seymour or any of the characters that we have, if they're a little bit top-heavy or maybe too tall or at a weird angle, say if he's like kind of bending over, as you can see, he's a little top-heavy, and his mouth just fell out, and we're going to get to that eventually. I'll show you all those interchangeable mouth shapes. Um, but with him bent over like that and top-heavy, what you can do is you can either take some tape, wrap it around him, and like tie him back down back here, or you can even have your hand down here, as long as you don't see it in the frame, he can be all the way here in place, and I still don't see his feet on the camera. So what I can do is take my hand down here and just kind of hold it down to make sure he doesn't fall over. So I can have Seymour kind of bent over looking at stuff, and he's not toppling over. My hand is there, but if you look closely in the camera itself, you don't see my hand in the shot at all. So with all those tips, I think we are ready to begin animating. Excellent. So I want to move Seymour back into his place. I'm just going to test out where he belongs. Right about here. That looks good. All right. And so this is the part where we'll be actually animating, and this is a very long process of a lot of just point and click, point and click, and a little bit of movements here and there. So this, this might not seem as exciting, so to speak, but this is obviously the whole meat and potatoes of your actual little film is the animations. Right, and it's definitely worth it in the long run. Once you see the final product, you'll be amazed at what you've accomplished over the time. Oh, yeah, it's great. You can turn these little inanimate objects that really can't do anything on your own, but, man, you can just make them do the coolest things. So, We should mention, too, that these characters here, compared to the characters that we built in the previous demo classes that were made all out of clay, these guys have wire armatures inside of them, and the wire helps us bend them to keep a pose. Exactly. These characters are uh, these characters in this set is almost more of what we would do in more advanced courses. So don't be too overwhelmed looking at these characters thinking that you're going to have to make these because this is kind of more for those guys that really want to challenge themselves with the kind of more advanced armatures, advanced sets. Because when we go into the actual animation movements with these guys up here, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother ball game. So. Right, and what we're doing here is all just to inspire you guys, so... Exactly. All right, turn the camera back on. Occasionally the camera might turn off like that just because it's going to save power. Um, we want to make sure that the flash is off, that it's zoomed all the way out, so we can do the zooming by hand. And it's zoomed out. And, and, this, and this also comes into hand as to why it's really good to have something like this little tripod, because a lot of times you'll realize the camera is on the whole time and it's draining power, and then you got to switch out the batteries. And if you just had it on a simple little like cardboard stand here, it'd be really hard to kind of take the camera off, switch the batteries and put it and try to put it exactly the way you had it before. Whereas something like this, when it stays nice and secure, it's pretty seamless when it comes to the pictures. Right, and if you'll notice on the tripod, you can actually screw the camera into the tripod itself, so that way it's incredibly secure compared to setting the camera on top of a box or something where it could topple over and you'd have a problem trying to set the shot right back up. Exactly. So, I guess without further ado, we can jump right into animating. So what I'm going to do, saying is how that there's no, there's no move, or there's no character in set here, I'm going to do what's called an establishing shot, where I just take a few pictures, and it's just point and click. And what you can do is, you could take one shot like that, but when we put these pictures into an actual film, 
we're going to see maybe anywhere from 6 to 12 pictures per second. So depending upon how long you want an image on the screen, you have to take that many pictures. So for this first establishing shot, let's just go right ahead and take a bunch of pictures. Exactly. Just rapidly take them. And the one thing that it comes to with your lighting, uh, when you have these lights kind of in the back that are pointing towards your set, you have to be really careful as to where you are in relation to the lights and the camera because if I was to come into sh shot right here where I'm kind of almost blocking the light up here, it's going to affect the shadows in the shot. So there will be just these strange little shadows that are coming in and out in there. And as you can see from just Tommy just simply bending over, yep. yeah, you can see these little spots here. So that's why if you see, if you, um, if you start taking a few pictures and you're noticing these weird little shadows, What's, what's best is to just, uh, just kind of quick take a picture and kind of do your best to just kind of stand back a little bit. Stand back, duck down, just get out of the way. Exactly. What you could do, too, is set the timer on. Most, most digital cameras have a timer on there where you can push the button, step back, and it'll count down from, say, 10 seconds or 2 seconds before it takes the picture. Mm -hmm. And then by doing that, it also helps make the movement less wiggly because by pushing this down, um, it, the camera might pick up the picture when the camera itself is kind of tilted a little bit. So when you finally put them into a film, the camera might be shaking just a little bit. Um, whereas if you have the timer on, that'll make sure that the the camera itself stays level throughout shooting. Exactly. It can get very frustrating, but that's the that's kind of the beauty of the claymation is how much you can have control over it. So if you just look at just a little bit like that, I mean, you can easily fix things. So. Yeah. So. We, after having a few establishing shots taken, we can start walking Seymour in. So I'm going to take the tape and we'll move his right leg first. So I'm going to move it a little bit. He's not fully in frame just yet, so I don't have to worry too much about moving much of his arms. And I can kind of see now that his arm was in the picture. So I'm going to start bending it back since his leg is moving forward to make him look like he's walking a little bit more. And the other great thing that it, that really helps out with these guys is not only doing the movements with the characters themselves, but almost, you know, just go in front of a mirror and act out what, exactly what you want to see because uh, that will help you as far as animation or as far as animating these characters. That way you know, you know, how to move the hips, how to move the arms. Like, do a little walk cycle in the mirror, make some crazy faces, make some crazy little walks and movements. That way you know exactly what should, what should move and what shouldn't move. Now we want to make sure with characters like these that we are moving other parts besides just the feet. Because we don't want to make it look like he's just sliding across the set. We want to make it look like he's actually walking. So, by moving the other leg forward and moving the other arm back... Yeah, and it's kind of just what we were saying before. If you think about when you're walking, when you put your right foot forward, you know your 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 hands and your arms aren't just staying just just staying right at right at your side. They're moving along with it. So that's the way to just kind of have the characters mimic exactly what you do. And as you can see, I just moved the left foot forward, the left arm back a little bit, and I also moved the right arm forward, just a tad. Maybe one more. I'll just shift him a little bit since his arm is a little too far out. We don't want to make it look like he's going really, like, waving his arms too much for just walking. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and shift the tape to the other side now. And also, when you, if you have some of these characters sometimes that maybe are a little top-heavy and they get a little bit of wiggly, they get a little bit of wiggle to them like, like he does, it's, it's best to... Get the movement you want and then just kind of let them settle a little bit and then press the picture because sometimes you can get some unnecessarily wiggles in there that you don't really want. Kind of just reiterating what we've said before. This this is like the, this is the kind of like the whole bulk of what you'll be doing once you get all this prep work and everything like that. It's all about just animating your characters, which is a very long process, but it really teaches you patience above all else. Because the more you take in, the more time you take in this animation to make it look nice and smooth, whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of uh, pictures here, just the better it'll look.
of turn his head a little bit to make him look more so at the props on the shelves. And as you can see, he reached his destination. Now we can probably take a few more shots. Actually, it might be best if I do that because as you can see, right. with his arm getting in there, it might get a little bit of a shadow. So, And you know, if, if, if you do have a hand that, that, that comes right in or a shadow that looks off in a few pictures, it's... It's it's isn't the end of the world because you can just go in and delete a few pictures. You can either reset your your shots to do it again, even more practice, or you can just kind of set a different frame rate to make it look a little smoother with those camera pictures gone. And all digital cameras are set up differently, but each one of them does have a delete button. So if you have a, a picture in there with a hand or something that you don't want, you can easily get rid of it before we finally get into uh, putting all the pictures together into a film. So now that Seymour reached his destination, what we're going to do is change the camera angle. Now, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to cheat Seymour's body a little bit this way here. And by moving the camera over this way, closer to Seymour, move him just a tad like that, turn his head, it's going to actually look like he's looking at the shelf. So I'm going to zoom this in a little bit more so you guys can get a better angle of what we're doing here. There we go. Now by doing this, um, it allows you to kind of skip a little bit of movement that you don't necessarily need because as you saw We got Seymour to walk all the way to the shelves But now to set up this camera angle to get the camera in there and to get him looking just right at the shelves We wanted to move him just a little bit and this is perfectly fine to do what we just did And As you can see in the frame Seymour's looking directly at the shelves So I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides so I can animate him again Right, and it kind of if you were to look at some of your more favorite movies, it's not all one continuous take. There's a lot of different little angles and multiple different camera shots. So you don't necessarily have to do your entire film with just one continuous camera movement. It's better for your actual film. It looks makes it look more dynamic, a little more angles. So you can go ahead and take the first picture. And then I'm going to turn his head ever so slightly, make him like look like he's looking at everything up on the shelves. All these different camera angles and camera shots make your film a lot more interesting than if you kept the camera just sitting in one spot throughout the entire film. Now sometimes depending upon what kind of wire you use inside of your character it might be a little bit stiff so you might have to over bend the wire itself to get him into a pose that you want him to, but it's perfectly fine because he'll kind of like bend back into the position you want him to. Because sometimes, like say, I'm just going to show you here to move his arm. It's more dramatic to do that than show his whoops, his um, his neck. But like if I want his arm, say like right here, and I want to move it ever so slightly, sometimes it'll just bend back into the position that it was in, so I need to overbend it, and as you can see, it kind of went back. It's very subtle, but it happens. Exactly, so. and it kind of almost falls into the whole philosophy of animation itself, where you kind of always over-exaggerate the movement to really, really push the point home. Alright, so I'm going to start bending his head down. What we're going to have him do is notice the hat, and then pick the hat up and put it on. Another thing you want to be careful of, which I just did not too long ago, was you want to be careful not to bump the table that everything's set up on as much as possible, because that might shift some things on the set and whatnot, and we don't really want the props moving in the pictures, because if you see the props move at all, in the film it'll look like they're alive. You won't notice it when you're animating, but you'll notice it once we look back at the film. Yeah, and little things like if the if, if the head went 
you know, if like, like what Tommy just well, like what just happened, like even right there, like with the little mouth, if if that completely falls off, a hand, a leg, an arm, a face, if that falls off, and but yeah, everything's still in motion or everything's exactly where you need it to be, you can kind of go back on the previous shot in your camera itself and see if you can line it up as good as you can. Because obviously that's going to happen. You, there are a lot of things you can't account for that'll happen with just so much going on. So. All right, so he's looking at the hat, and as you just saw, his mouth fell out. Um, what we're going to do now is swap out his mouth. Right, and what we'll do here... I can actually yeah, do this. As you can see, we have all these different mouth shapes for Seymour to give him all these different expressions. And they each have a little pin in the back. And we will show you how to construct these in our advanced class. But besides the pin, which can be sharp, and you can, you can probably poke yourself with them... You could also do magnets, and we'll show you how to do that as well. But coming back to Seymour here, you can see that we can easily pop his mouth out just like that. You know, he has no facial expression whatsoever. So we're going to make him look excited. I'm going to use this mouth right here. As you can see, the previous mouth was closed. I'm going to pop that mouth in there. And when we look back at the animation, it'll look like he's actually opening up his mouth. Now I should mention that the characters' heads are sculpted out of the Sculpey clay that we had used for the other characters and the other demos, and it's the clay that we'll always be using. But the clay is actually baked in the oven, so that way it's hard and we're able to have stuff like this where you can pop it in and out. And you don't have to worry about it being smushed or getting exaggerated. Right. We'll take a few pictures there with his mouth open. Now, since the hat really isn't in the shot, or in the frame itself, um, what we're going to do is have him pick it up so he can like reach for it with both of his arms. The hat is made out of felt, and Seymour's hands are raw clay. Uh, one thing with the Sculpey clay is that it doesn't like to stick to fabric, so we're going to have to have um, a little assistance with him putting his hat on. So what we can do is hold onto the hat outside of the frame of the camera and we won't see our hand in the shot. It'll look like Seymour's actually picking it up. And uh, kind of what we've been doing so far is kind of showing the, kind of going from big to small. When it comes to the big, as far as Seymour walking in on frame and kind of worry about moving his whole body, and we work a little bit smaller with the with the face as far as different little mouths and emotions because obviously you sell emotion other than just faces you can do eyebrows you can do eyes and then the hands what he's doing here like have them jump in the air for excitement what we do for the eyebrows on these guys is we bake their heads without eyebrows as well so that way the eyebrows are just raw clay and we can stick that onto the clay and then um, move the eyebrows up and down to give them different expressions So now I'm going to move the hat off this horse's head here. Kind of more so onto Seymour's hands. We're going to turn his hands to make it look like he's holding the hat. And this arm up a little bit more. Now, as you can see, this end of the hat is kind of blocked by the camera there. Let's try and get a better angle. There we go. This end of the hat right here is not visible in the frame. So, Jamie, if you could just kind of pinch that and kind of hold it up. Sure can. As we go on, as we take pictures. So, and I'm having Jamie do it because he's on that side of the set and his shadow won't really be noticed in the picture. So the next one, I'm going to bend his arms up a little bit higher, and we're going to essentially have to hold the hat outside of the frame, make sure that the thumb's not shown in the shot itself. And as you can see, Seymour's kind of leaning in towards the hat, and he's, he would topple over. Oops. But 
by holding onto the hat, it helps balance him out. So there we go. Now what we could do too, is have him throw the hat up in the air, so that way it's out of the frame. And it'll actually make it look like the hat is flying, and then we can plop it down onto his head. Exactly. So, we'll lift it up a little bit more, kind of hold on to it like so. Oops. It's just falling apart here. Which will happen. So I'm going to hold the hat a little bit higher up, make sure it's still in frame. And by just hovering it over there, my hand's not in the shot. And when you look back at the film itself, it'll look like the hat is flying. And I actually like reposition Seymour because in that picture, all you saw was his hand. All right, now the hat is up in the air, so we can turn Seymour. Let me find where his eyebrow went. Found it. I had bumped the eyebrow, and as you know, the eyebrow is just raw clay, so it just kind of fell off of his head. So we're gonna just kind of stick it back on there. Yeah, you'll soon find out that even though for being stiff characters, they have an awful lot of personality and will do things entirely that you don't want, so... It's just working with your prima donna actors on set. Alright, since the hat is still up in the air, we can just concentrate on animating Seymour. We'll bring his arms down. Oops. Bring him back. As you can see, he was bent back and leaning up against the globe, and when I brought his arms down, he leaned forward because the gravity was pulling him forward, and I had to bend him back to make it look like he's just not rocking back and forth. So, bend his arms down again. And bend him down again once more. But this time I'm going to have the hat start coming down, so we're not just animating one thing at a time. The more you animate at the same time, the, interesting, the more interesting it'll look. Exactly. It's just a way to kind of think about it, get your minds going as far as how to make your little animations more and more dynamic. First we just had him just put the hat on, but then we had the idea of, oh, making him throw it up in the air. Maybe a little bit more of a challenge, but it'll just look so much better on film. And, and if you notice on there, the eyebrow just got up. You could definitely just turn it into something that he was you know, looking up in the air towards. So, All right. And with Seymour here, his eyes are actually just glasses, and the glasses are able to come off. And we do have multiple eyes to make him look like he's blinking. So since I took the eyes off, let's just go ahead and make him blink right away. Stick those on there, and I'll put his eyebrow back on. Exactly, and plus it'll work a little bit better if the hat's coming on, if his eyes are down, too, so... Right. Always keep in mind, too, that when you are blinking, that doesn't just involve your eyes. There's other secondary animation, which is a big thing that we'll emphasize in, uh, in our advanced course. But secondary animation, it isn't just the eyes blinking, it's the eyebrows coming down. And then he would actually have the hat more so on his head. Like that. Now we will go ahead and close his mouth here, but I'll make it look like he's smiling. As you saw, the first, the first face that we gave him, he was kind of pouting here. Whoops, not that one. This one, here we go. Now there's a big difference between the two faces. His mouth is currently open, so we went from this to the open mouth. And now we're going to go to him kind of smirking. So we'll pop this mouth on here. Now that the hat's on, we're not going to leave it just at that. It's still going to be moving. So we're going to have it kind of come down a little bit more. Exactly. It just comes back to what we were saying before with secondary animation. Now we're going to have to take the hat off to pop his eyes back out and put on the new pair of glasses to open his eyes up. Yeah, and this is just one way of construction with uh, when it comes to blinking and with eyes, how he has his character of glasses. So if your character doesn't have glasses, like maybe the little shopkeep in the corner. That's just a matter of stretching over some flesh over his or some flesh clay over his eyes to make it look like the blink. And for most of the other characters that are like Seymour and the shopkeeper, their eyeballs are made out of just little glass or stone beads. 
Exactly. And now that's uh, he's kind of more to the right or to the left, what I'm going to do is just slightly move the camera. That way he's kind of more centered. That way, for us as viewers, kind of realize that he's the focus of the, of the scene here. Because that's another way to establish your main character is to kind of have him more central in your shots. And then I'll just tilt his head here a little bit just for one final movement, and then this could be our final shot. Make sure he stops wobbling before we take the picture. And it's not just one tilt. I want to do like maybe two or three images of him tilting his head. Maybe you want him to end on that smile. Okay, let's have him smile with his teeth. So, pop out this mouth here. And I've got another mouth, whoops, of him, of his teeth showing. Go. And then we can take a few shots with that, and then we'll be finished. And there's obviously so much stuff that you can do as far as with the hands and with a lot of the props, too. We just kind of want to give you just a basic, just a little overview. We didn't want to overload you too much with all the stuff that we can do. It's kind of just a way to trigger your imagination and just to kind of get the ball moving, so to speak, as far as thinking of your characters, what type of movement you'd like. Because obviously when it comes to the advanced course, we'll tackle more advanced sort of movements when it comes to stuff flying in the air, a lot more hands, feet involved, stuff of that sort. So, Now the next step after you're done taking your pictures would be to take the pictures and put them into a computer program such as Windows Movie Maker or iMovie or whatever other type of film software you have for your computer. And each of those programs is a different setup, but most of them will have some sort of way to import the images into the program. So you want to go to the File menu and then look for something that says Import Images or something about the pictures, and then that will allow you to bring your pictures into the program, and then you would do File, Export, Movie, and you could set the frame rate, say maybe 6 or 12 frames per second, depending upon how fast you want it to move and then you would hit export export or render out your movie and then it would render out into a windows movie video or a quicktime movie depending upon the program that you use but since we're not doing that right now what we can do is show you the film on the camera so most cameras have a playback button this button right here it looks like the little play symbol and as you can see we see the final shot that we took, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of rewind. Um, I can, each camera would have like a left and right arrow button, and I can just kind of push that back shot by shot, and as you can see it's going in reverse right now. I'm going to bring it back all the way to the first shot that we took, and then show you guys what our film looks like. Exactly. This is the really fun part, because it's almost like cheating or kind of getting a little preview where you see what you had. Because obviously, when you put it into a software, you can add a lot more stuff to it. But this is just a nice little way to kind of see what you just shot. Alright, so, try and get this set up so you can get a good view of it. Alright. So, here's our the first image that we took. And you can keep pushing the button just like so. My camera, the, the screen doesn't go black in between each image, it'll just show each image itself, so it'll look like a movie. Um, some cameras will go black in between each image, or like flash in between each image, but each camera itself is different. So Exactly, and when you do get those little flashes or black, don't be too overly concerned, because it's probably more with your camera than what you actually shot. Nice. And there we have our movie, and awesome. I can rewind again. That looks pretty cool. And look at that, we just did that in less than, you know, less than a half an hour. Just imagine when you guys have a lot of time and a lot of different sets and characters. There's just so much that you can make. It just really, really makes it all the more exciting to get a part of. Look at that. That looks great. Mm-hmm. And as you can see there, when he threw the hat up, it looked like it was flying. And you didn't see our hands in the shot whatsoever. Mm-hmm. 
And this it was, what would you say, Tommy? Like five second animation? Three, four, five? Maybe a little bit more? I'd say maybe about ten seconds. Well, actually, the walk itself was probably a good five seconds. Okay. Now, holding the button down, my camera probably plays it back at like, oh, maybe ten frames every second. The more frames you have every second, the faster that the movement will be in the film. And how many pictures do you think we took total then for that 10 second animation? At least 100, if not more. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of gives you a rough idea as to how many pictures, how many seconds, how many frames. Awesome. So that's looking good. And, you know, when you do see this little playback and there's something that you missed in there or something that looks a little, little you know, not, not so good, you can easily just delete the pictures. Or the nice thing is, is you already have the guys set and ready to go for that scene. If, if need be, you can completely redo the scene because obviously practice makes perfect. So, Right, and one thing that we need to be more aware of was the shadows that we were casting from bending over and trying to get all the characters in and depending upon the positions of our heads. Our heads were blocking some of the lights, and you could see that there was kind of a strobing effect going on while we were animating, but it's, it wasn't terrible, but you do want to keep that in mind and try and make sure that you're completely out of the shot. So maybe next time when we attack something like this, we'll turn on the timer, and it'll allow you to step back and let the camera take the picture mm -hmm. maybe two or ten seconds after we push the button. So everything will stop wiggling, and there will be no cast shadows from anything. That will just be a surprise, and you'll know exactly what it will look like, and there will be no strobing, and it will look great. Exactly. Do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So that about wraps it up, and we hope to see you all in our classes in 2014. And I guess until then, I'm Tommy Sims. And I'm Jamie Hazelwood. And we'll see you then. Stay animated.